Geometry, what's crack a -lackin'? This is tearing it up, aka Mr. Taren, aka the giant midget. That's what we're rolling with today. Um, we're going to be talking about chapter 12. I'm going to be the one that's uh, rolling these these lessons out to you. Uh, we're going to be doing chapter or section 12.1, 12 12.2, 12 12.3, and 12.7. 12 um, 12.1 12 is reflections, 12.2 12 is translations, 12.3 12 is. Uh, what was it again? Uh, rotations and 12.7 is dilations. So you can go ahead and fast forward through that part if you've already watched this video. But if not, um, that's what we're going to do this chapter. Before I start, I just want to say um, if you have any questions during the video, please um, email your teachers. We will get back to you. Um, otherwise, you can pause uh, whenever you would like. All right. So let's pin this up to our screen here. And let's get rocking and rolling. So our learning target for today is to identify, draw, and graph reflections. But before we move on, I just want to list again the four types of transformations in the coordinate plane that we are going to be looking at in this chapter. You will need to know these, and you will need to know the academic vocabulary for this. So what I mean by that is something like this. Our four types of transformations. The first one is reflections. That's what we're covering in this video. And you can think about that as a flip maybe. The second one you need to know is translations. That's like a slide or shift. The third one you need to know will be rotations. So I think about that as like a spin, like something spinning around. And then the last one, it will be a uh, dilation. That's like a stretch. If you've uh, ever heard of, um, sometimes when people get sick, their their eyes, their, their pupils dilate, which means their their, their uh, pupils actually stretch wider. That's, that's where you can see that in the real life. Um, but yeah, like I said before, you need to know these four terms. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, when we're working with <clears throat> these transformations, we're going to be talking about a shape that is on the coordinate plane, the original shape, and the original shape oftentimes will be referred to as a pre-image, and that will have coordinates, you know, x comma y, whatever that looks like. You know, it could be a triangle or a rectangle or a trapezoid or whatever. But then after a transformation has occurred, what happens is this arrow just represents a transformation has occurred somehow, whether it's a reflection, a translation, whatever. And then our new, like say this was point A, our new point would be called A prime with new coordinates x, y. And all that means is that there's been some sort of a transformation. So you'll hear me refer to, oh, okay, well, we're going to move A. A is transformed to A prime. That just means we've a, a transformation has occurred. All right? I'm not going to write too much down on this slide, but as a reflection, you do need to know the word reflection. But, um, you know, you'll oftentimes hear, you know, uh, flips or mirroring or stuff like that. Before we talk about reflections on the coordinate plane, we need to know kind of what a reflection kind of looks like. So if I were to go through A, B, C, and D and figure out which ones are reflections and which ones aren't, if you'd like to pause the video at this point and try and try it on your own, you can, um, and check your work after. If not, we're going to go through this right now. A, like right here, looks like it's not a, tr uh, a reflection. It looks like it's the shape has just kind of slided to the right, which is actually called a translation. That'll be the next video we talk about is a translation. Um, but if you look at B, it looks like there is a reflection, right? It looks like it's reflecting across this vertical line. Oftentimes you'll hear that as like the y-axis. Um, so that's definitely a, trans or a reflection. Same here with C. That looks like it's a, or a reflection as well. Looks like it's kind of, if you were to fold it over that line. And D is a tricky one. Um, 
at first glance, it kind of looks like it would be a reflection, but these don't mirror up exactly the right the same way, so those would not be a reflection. So there's three different types of reflections we're going to be looking at in this section. The first is a reflection across the x-axis. So, for example, you have point P here, or the pre-image point, right? And what's happening is it's reflecting across this x-axis. So it's like if you were to fold a piece of paper like this, that's all that's happening. And so that point would project out to right here. And so it reflects perfectly across that line. And if you notice, the only thing that's changing from P to P prime, if you notice, X is staying the exact same, but Y is just changing signs. So if you had a positive Y, it would be a negative Y. Notice positive to negative. But if it was a negative, that just means it would switch to a positive, and it's literally that easy. So the X's stay the same, and the Y's change signs or opposite signs. So for example, reflect these points. Okay, well after the transformation, then this point the x's are going to be the same, the y is going to switch. Notice from pot negative 2 to positive 2. Well, let's take a look at the next one. Well, the x is going to be the same, so 2 is going to stay the same. What's the opposite of 0? Well, 0 is the opposite of 0, so that's not going to reflect at all. And then, remember, x will stay the same here, negative 1, but that negative 6 will turn to positive 6. Opposites. All right, not too bad. That was reflecting across the x-axis, so make sure, oops, reflect across the x-axis. Here is your formula, okay? Just basically y is the opposite. Reflecting across the y-axis now, notice if I have a point here, if I were to reflect it across like that, Notice this time um, your x, your sign of your x is the opposite, but your y's stay the same. So if it helps you remember, this is how I would remember it. Oh, if you have a transformation across the x-axis, that changes your y. So it's like the opposite of the one you think. If you have a, a transformation across the y-axis, then that really, it's just, it's affecting your x. Your x is your opposite, so it's kind of the opposite of what you would think. But so here we go. If we have point P right here, and that's transforming to point P prime, and it's reflecting across the y-axis, then all that's happening is my x value is opposite of what it was. And my y value is the same. So we're going to go through these the exact same way we did. So again, my x value is the one that's opposite. So if I have a positive 3, the opposite of that would be a negative 3. It will keep Oh boy. And we'll keep the negative two we'll keep the negative two the same. Alright? If I have a positive two here, remember we're gonna do the opposite of that it would be negative two, and the zero will stay the same. If I have a negative one, that's gonna to change to positive one. And then the negative six will stay the same. Alright? And that's for across the y-axis. Finally, we have a reflection across the line y equals x. The line y equals x, if you want to think about that in y equals mx plus b form, it's really 1 over 1x plus 0. So notice your y-intercept is at 0, and your slope is up 1 over 1. That's why your line looks like that. That's not too important in this uh, example, but I just wanted to show you where the line y equals x comes from, right? Because 1 over 1x is the same as x, plus 0. You don't really need the plus 0 there. But if you'll notice what happens here, uh, my original point with coordinates x, y, after the transformation has now turned into y, x. All that happens is that when there's a transformation across the line y equals x, it's actually called an inverse line. You'll learn about that in Algebra 2. Um, these just swap. That's it. 
and you just swap your coordinates. So it's a pretty simple rule to remember. So if I have the coordinates 3 comma negative 2, that would just be negative 2 comma 3. If I had 2 comma 0, it would be 0 comma 2. Again, we don't have to switch any of the signs, it's just we're just swapping them. If I had negative 1 comma negative 6, it would be negative 6 comma negative 1. That's all you got to do. So now the main idea of this section is to be able to draw our reflections. Instead of just giving me the coordinates, I want to be able to take a picture on a coordinate plane and given some sort of transformation, draw that out. Okay, so what's going to happen is your first step here, you're going to take some coordinates that I'm going to give you and you're going to plot that out. And then you're going to apply whatever reflection rule we go with. So it could be across the x-axis, y-axis, or the line y equals x. We're going to use one of those rules that we did a second ago. And then the last thing we're going to do is plot and label our new points. All right. So as we keep going here, whoops, I didn't want to do that. That's our note key we ever are interested in. Let's go ahead and do this. So step one, step one, we want to plot this. So let's use orange. Orange is kind of a good color. So I want to plot, here we go, two comma negative one. So that means to the right two, to the right two, and then down one. So it'll be right here, that's neg or two negative one. I'm gonna go ahead and erase these arrows just in case you forgot how to do that. Uh, and that is x. y is at negative 4, negative 3. So we're going to count here, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 3, 1, 2, 3 is going to be right there, y. And then we'll go ahead and uh, plot z at 3, comma 2. So 1, 2, 3, up 2, 1, 2, and there is z right there. And so we'll just kind of draw our triangle here. All right, so that's what our initial image, our pre-image looks like. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, apply our rule. Um, it looks like our rule here is across the x-axis. So let's just scroll kind of back up there and see what x-axis was. Um, x-axis was this one right here. So remember that just causes our y to go opposite. So let's remember that. Our y goes opposite. So here, remember, um, let's change colors now. Let's go purple. Remember, it's uh, x comma y transforms into x comma negative y. And I would go ahead and write that down when you do these just so you can just refer back to it over and over again. So the x's are going to stay the same. So 2 will be the same and the y's are going to go opposite. So opposite of negative 1 would be positive 1. Uh, this x will be the same, and then the opposite of negative 3 will be positive 3. This 3 will be the same, and then opposite of 2 will be negative 2. So let's go ahead and plot that. Let's plot x prime first. x prime is this one. So x prime at 2 comma 1, right there, x prime. Y prime at negative 4, comma 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Y prime. And then Z prime at 3, comma negative 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Z prime. And now let's just connect our shape here. And if you look, that looks like it's reflected perfectly across the x-axis, right? If I kind of draw this line here, looks like it's reflected pretty good. All right, that's, that's all we're doing. So I got one more example here for you to try. So if you'd like to pause the video and try to do your own reflection across the line y equals x, go for it. If not, go ahead and continue uh, playing the video and we're going to go through this. So if you remember the rule for reflecting across the line y equals x, our rule was 
switching, right? It was switching our X and our Y. So let's remember that. So let's go ahead and write that down here. The rule was if I have X comma Y, it's going to go to Y, oops, Y comma X. That's the transformation. So let's go ahead and plot RST first here. So R is at negative 2 comma 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, right there. R negative 2 comma 2. Zoom up a little bit here. Uh, S is at 5 comma 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 comma 0. And then T is at 3 comma negative 1. 1, 2, 1, 2 3, negative 1. So there it is right there. Let's connect our lines. I will say this feature of straight lines on the iPad is pretty nice. Now let's go ahead and reflect. Let's go pink. So remember, basically what's happening is our X's and our Y's are swapping. So this is going to turn to 2, negative 2. This is going to turn to 0, 5. This is going to turn to negative 1, comma 3. And let's plot those. So R prime is at 2, negative 2. 1, 2, 2. Right there. S prime at 0, 5, so we're not going to the right or left at all, but going up 5 units. And then T prime at negative 1, comma 3. Right there. Let's connect these dots. And although it's probably a little bit hard to see right now, that is reflected over the line y equals x. All right, but I wrote myself a note to stop here because next we're going to do translations in the next video. But that's how to do reflections. Remember, it's just kind of mirroring over. Um, but basically, there's three different rules. We're, we're uh, reflecting across the x, reflecting across the y, and reflecting across the line y equals x. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to your teachers. We'll be more than happy to work those out through you. That's all I got. Taryn out.